the seven stages of cultivation. Our end product is beautiful mushrooms like this. Pictured from left to right, blue oysters, shiitake, and yellow oysters. These are blocks of sawdust and other supplemented materials that we use for cultivating mushrooms at our farm, Fungi Ally. The seven stages of cultivation are as follows. Media treatment, inoculation, spawn run, complete colonization, pinning, harvest, and rest. The first one is media treatment. The point of this process is to get rid of any bacteria or other fungi or viruses that will eat the substrate that we want to grow mushrooms on. There's a lot of different ways to treat media and basically they vary in uh, aggressiveness depending on how available the nutrients in the substrate are. Something like a log is really tied up, the nutrients are really tied up behind lignin and hard to digest and uh, compounds. Something a little bit easier to digest like straw uh, doesn't have that lignin and so more fungi and bacteria can access the carbon and nitrogen that is in the straw. So we're going to treat those different materials uh, accordingly. With logs, simply harvesting them in the winter and using them within one month of cutting is enough to guarantee that they don't have other fungi in them. Of course, it's really important to harvest healthy wood that doesn't already have fungal infection, but because the logs <clears throat> are really hard for most fungi and bacteria to digest, if we put the mycelium of, say, the shiitake mushroom right into the log, we give it enough of a head start that it can colonize before any other uh, microorganisms get established in that log. With straw, if we simply wetted it and put added the mycelium of, say, oyster mushrooms, there would be a lot of other competing microorganisms because straw is a lot easier to digest by those microorganisms. So quickly, wet straw starts to uh, decay and be composted. Um, likewise, you can think of in your kitchen, right? With bread, if you leave bread out on the counter, even in, in a plastic bag with high humidity, within three, four, five days, it's going to start having mold on it. So if we have a material like bread that has wheat bran or, or some other high nitrogen compound in it, then it'll start molding very, very rapidly. So when we're treating those materials, the treatment is usually steam, something much more aggressive that's going to kill all of the uh, fungi and bacteria that are present in that compound. Um, with straw, a common way, there's three or four co different common ways of treating straw. Uh, lime, heat, and fermentation are the most common. And in a couple of sections, we're going to go uh, step by step through the process of growing oyster mushrooms on straw. So media treatment, getting rid of microorganisms. So we have a clean slate for the fungi that we want to grow mushrooms from to get established. You can also think of this like plowing. So you're clearing the field of any wanted plants and ready for the plants that you want to grow. Next stop is inoculation. So this is the introduction of the mycelium of the mushrooms we want to grow into the substrate. Now it's really important to differentiate here between clean and sterile. Ideally inoculations, most inoculations should be clean. What does that mean? It means a clean surface, uh, clean hands, um, uh, the media is, is clean, there's nothing um, that you can see that's, that's obviously um, has other bacteria or fungi on it that's in the area. And this can be outdoors, it can be, um, it can be inside in just like a random room. When we're talking about clean, there's no necessary filters or sterile or spraying alcohol or anything like that. 
simple soap and water and just uh, normal hygienic practices are sufficient for a lot of methods of mushroom cultivation. Now sterile is for when we're growing mushrooms on a medium like bread, on a medium that has a really high nutrient content that's easily accessible to a wide range of microorganisms. And it's at that point that we need to be really conscious of things like airflow and uh, anything on our hands and using alcohol and working in a lab. And it's really another, uh, a whole nother process being sterile compared to being clean. I'll talk about um, lab cultivation a little bit in uh, two or three units, but for now, we're really just focused on being clean when we inoculate. What is spawn? So it's really, really important to know the difference between spawn and spores. This is one of the most common misconceptions noobs use. Spawn is mycelium. Spores are not mycelium, right? They're a different stage of the life cycle. The only similarity between them is that they both start with SP, and that's it. Spawn is clean mycelium that you're using to inoculate a new substrate. So, so really, really ground this. Take a moment to, to say to yourself, spawn is different than spores. Spawn is the mycelium, spores are what come off of the mushroom, right? Okay, the next step after we have inoculated, we prepared the media, we inoculate with the mycelium we want to grow, next step is the spawn run. And spawn run, as you can see from this photo, is when the mycelium starts to jump off from the spawn that was inoculated into this substrate you'll see that white mycelium growing into the sawdust and it's growing out into the sawdust. Ideally, we would want to keep it at around 70 to 75 degrees during spawn run. Um, and it's really, really nice to have a little bit of space between bags that are, are where the mycelium is running because the mycelium actually generates heat. So it needs space around it to give off that heat and continue breathing. Usually the spawn run takes about three weeks. For shiitakes, shiitakes is the biggest different uh, mushroom, that they actually take eight weeks for their spawn run. They take a while to fruit, to be ready to fruit. And once the spawn has completely run through the substrate, it's at complete colonization. And at complete colonization, there's kind of a switch in what the mycelium is doing. It shifts out of this expand as fast as possible and rapidly phase to really get all the resources that are available in the, in the colonized material in, into the mycelial network and get ready to fruit a mushroom. So one of the things that initiates fruiting is running out of material substrate to continue consuming. So this shifts the mycelial uh, process from expansion to begin the fruiting process. And at that point, complete colonization, you can basically just stall out what's happening. So by putting the block or um, you know straw log into colder temperatures, it essentially just puts the mycelium into hibernation and it won't start moving into that fruiting stage or it'll start moving into that stage very, very, very slowly. So this is one method that a lot of people use, the cold storage, to be able to spread out how they're fruiting their mushrooms. The next step is pinning. So pinning obviously is a really exciting stage. We start to get uh, all these little mushrooms that are popping up from the, uh, the substrate that we had treated and inoculated and all the mycelium got to watch that grow out. And there's four critical aspects to pinning. And, and the increase decrease that you see on the right side here is in reference to um, incubation. So when we're initiating fruiting and starting the pinning phase, we want to increase humidity and oxygen 
and decrease temperature in lighting, or temperature and increase lighting, right? The incubation phase can just happen at room temperature, doesn't need any lighting, doesn't need usually extra humidity, it's just good as it is. With pinning, we want the humidity to be up around 90 to 95%. We want the CO2 levels to usually down below 600 parts per million. And lighting, we want to be able to comfortably read in the room. So I'll be able to look at a paper and say, oh yeah, I can like easily read uh, whatever's on this piece of paper. The concept of keeping mushrooms in the dark only applies to Agaricus bisporus, uh, the, the button mushroom. So pretty much all the mushrooms that we're looking at growing need light for proper morphology. And the pinning stage usually takes anywhere from three to five days. After pinning, there's full fruit body formation and then harvest. Harvest usually occurs with these uh, when the, the cap margin is just about to flatten out. So you want to harvest the mushrooms before the cap margin, the edge of the cap, is flipping up and you can see the gills, uh, but, but, but after the cap is no longer connected to the stem. And for harvesting, you can simply cut the mushroom off with a knife or <clears throat> just twist uh, the mushroom off of the block that it's growing on. And the last stage is rest, rest and relaxation. And what's happening in this stage is that it takes a lot of energy for the mycelium to generate a mushroom. So all those nutrients that it had been gathering from the substrate are used up in the mushroom production. And now it needs time to gather those nutrients again from the substrate to be ready to fruit for a second time.